hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Happy Sunday. It's the weekend, almost over with, but <laughs> happy Sunday, y'all. Y'all know what it is. It's brunch Sunday. So again, hello, my name is Terry, and welcome to my kitchen. So today we're going to be doing brunch. Of course, it's Sunday, fun day. You know how we do on Sundays. We got to have a mimosa because it's brunch. That's what you do for brunch, right? So before I get started with anything, I got to get my mimosa ingredients because y'all know I got to pop the bottles first. Hope y'all are doing well. We're going to have a fun little show today. Um, as you can see from the thumbnail, we're going to do a little getting to know me situation. I have my daughter actually picked 15 questions from this little website um, that gave us suggestions on like when people are trying to do like get to know me type videos. Everybody on YouTube always does like a get to know me. Of course, this is acting stupid today. So I had my daughter pick the 15 questions out because I was like, eh, I don't want to pick them because I'll probably pick the least evasive questions. But she actually picked some good ones. Nothing too nosy. And then also like y'all can ask me questions you know, especially if you don't know me personally, or if you do know me, maybe you want to know something that is a random new fact about me. Let me see who's in the comments because we got a few folks. Make sure y'all like the video on your way in. Yes. Oh, and almost. That's right. Almost. <laughs> um, so yeah, make sure you like the video. We got Wilbur Gross in the building. Thank you so much for joining, Wilbur. Salute to you as well, as well as the wife and kids. Hope everyone is well. How's your new baby? All right. Y'all know I got to pop the bottle because it's Sunday. Oh, yes. So today for our champagne slash sparkling wine situation, we're going to do another Moscato situ uh, sparkling wine. This is barefoot. Y'all, I get the cheap ones, okay? I don't spend a whole lot of money unless I'm trying to go, unless I'm going to someone's house and they're hosting people for brunch, I'll bring champagne. Or if I go to someone's house for dinner, I'll bring wine. But other than that, if I'm just at home, it's just me, I'll get the barefoot kind and it tastes just as good, okay? So for our fruit today, we're going to do strawberry mango. So y'all know I'll just puree some fruit. I had frozen strawberries and mangoes that I uh, defrosted a little bit in the microwave, put a little monk fruit in there, blended it up, and we have a puree for our mimosa. So if you have a glass, make sure you, make sure you fill it. Have a glass with me. Who else we got in the comments? Look, Celeste is saying hello. Yvette's letting one, everyone know afternoon, afternoon to you as well, Yvette and Celeste. Thank you so much for being here. Cute dress. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Werber says, everyone is doing well here. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. You know, here on my channel, I love to, you know, salute and shout out to the beautiful families that are being created here. We celebrate families over here, so... If I know of a lovely family, I'm going to shout them out. Let me find my wine stopper. Then we can get started. So for our brunch meal today, y'all, we're going to be doing like a skillet little situation. Actually, so I'm sure y'all have been to like brunch restaurants and they have like the little skillets, you know, with the potatoes and eggs and protein and veggies and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to do one of those where we're going to do like a chicken gyro type situation. I don't know why I'm looking in here. Oh, because I wanted to mix up my mimosa. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure you've had those. Those are usually my brunch go to's because I actually really fun fact. That's not even a part of it of the fun facts about Terry or 15 facts about Terry. I do not like eggs, y'all. And as someone who calls herself like kind of bodybuilding, not liking eggs is tough, but I hate it. I hate eggs. I barely can deal with egg whites. So today our skillet is not going to have any eggs, but I will say if you like eggs, I actually recommend that you put a fried egg on top, either sunny side up if you like the egg or if you like the yolk or like over medium and then you can cut it open. 
I think that would be so good. Fried eggs look so good. I just can't stomach them. So cheers to y'all. Cheers to the fact that we are over 800 watch hours towards monetization. Y'all, I made a goal at the beginning of this month. Um, so at the end of March, I wanted I, my goal was to hit 500. I had surpassed that. And then I was like, OK, because I have over 500 hours starting out in April, I think I can get to a thousand. So that was like over 400 hours in one month. And y'all, we almost there. We're less than 200 hours away and we got two whole weeks left of the month. So we're definitely going to smash through the thousand mark. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So, so excited. So cheers. Cheers to y'all and your support. I really appreciate it. All right. We got to get started because we got lots of little steps to do. Y'all know me. You know, I love making things myself as much as possible. So this is not going to fit in the fridge. We're going to make a tzatziki sauce, okay? We got to do that first because we want it to chill. So we're going to start the tzatziki sauce with a cucumber, English cucumber. English cucumbers are great because they don't have any seeds in them. I'm actually using a recipe from skinnytaste.com. So I'm going to pull that up. If you see me referencing, oh, we got a notification. Someone's already showing love from my friend Celeste for $25 for the brunch vibes. Appreciate you, Celeste. I thank you so much for the support. Celeste is a real one, y'all. When I don't feel like it, she'd be like, go on, girl, you can do it. So <laughs> cheers to Celeste. Okay. So. This particular recipe is from skinnytaste.com. I'll link the recipe down below if you're interested. But Skinny Taste has been around for years. I used to use their recipe when I did Weight Watchers. Y'all know I have done everything under the sun to lose weight, right? So um, I used to use their website a lot or her website a lot when I did Weight Watchers. Even like she has a lot of keto and low carb friendly recipes. I'm not keto. I'm not pro keto. But I do like some of the low carb recipes because when you are trying to cut weight, one of the things ways you do cut weight is to reduce the amount of carbs you're eating. So it is helpful to find low carb recipes because you can use that into your lifestyle. So we're going to use Skinny Taste's um, recipe, I believe on hers. So I'll go ahead and read off the recipe for the tzatziki sauce. She says use eight ounces of fat free Greek yogurt, which I have that. She says use full fat if you're keto, but I don't, you know how I feel about keto. One small cucumber. I'm just going to use about this much because this one is not a small one. This is kind of long. Uh, a clove of garlic that you're going to crush. We're going to grate ours. Lemon juice, one teaspoon of lemon juice, a tablespoon of um, dill. She said put in fresh chives. I'm not doing that. And salt and pepper. And we might add in a little pepper or a little garlic powder. Um, I might add in a little bit of red wine vinegar. You know, y'all know I like to do my own thing. Let me get the yogurt out as well. So I have just some fat-free non or Greek non-fat yogurt, plain. So to start out this recipe with our tzatziki, we have to grate up our cucumber, Okay. So I'm just going to use a little hand grater. You can have a box grater, but just make sure it's kind of uh, the big one like this, kind of rough. So it can, ooh, okay. So once you grate up the cucumber, we're going to have to drain it and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I'm draining it or grating it inside of this bowl with the strainer on top. All right, y'all. So I said this is a get to know me, right? So I'm going to answering these 15 random facts or questions about me. Uh, my daughter actually is the one who picked out the questions. So I looked over them, but I didn't like write down any answers. So y'all are going to get my answers. I'm going to read the question and then y'all going to get my answer straight up. My brother's in the building. Hello, Ari. <laughs> hey, sis. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. Shout out to the bro. Okay, so the first question, so funny. How many siblings do you have? 
I actually have three siblings. Most people don't know that. Maybe I don't talk about my siblings enough. I think that's what it is. Because we're also far and apart in age, probably. So it's not like I have a lot of like school experience with them. Um, so I have my brother. He's here. He is 14 years older than me. Then I have a younger or an older sister. She is nine years older than me. Then I have a younger sister who is nine years younger than me. So, yeah. Three siblings. We're all far apart in age, but I'm actually pretty close with all of them. We all have our own unique relationship. So, yeah. My sister, my older sister, her and I, we talk damn near every day. She is one of the moderators in the group. So, in the in the chat on YouTube. Y'all see her just about every live. I don't know where she at today. <laughs> Look who's here. We got Queen Zay in the building. Hello, hello, boo. Yes, I am so glad to see you. All right. So today, if you're just joining, I'm doing like a 15, I'm doing a get to know me. My daughter Avery picked out 15 questions from this long list of questions. Um, to give YouTubers and content creators questions, you know, ideas of questions that their subscribers or followers may want to know about them. So my daughter picked out 15 and I'm going to answer them. So the first one was how many siblings I have. I have three, older brother, older sister, and a younger sister. And then the second question is what social media platform do you prefer the most or do you use the most? That is answer the answer to that question is instagram instagram is bay for me i love instagram i have been on instagram since about 2010 2011 no 2011 or maybe 12 maybe 2012 that's when i got an iphone i used to have an android and then i got my first iphone in 2012 and i've been an apple fanboy ever since Save your comments if you love Android. I'm not down in Android. I'm just an Apple fan. So I've been on Instagram for a long time. And I remember when Instagram was just for the iPhone people. Then they let in the Android and all hell broke loose. Because then that means everybody and their mama on Instagram, okay? And that's when Instagram just became the it girl. And... You know, I've always used my Instagram as like a way to chronicle my life, I guess. Mainly, it's always been about, you know, people I went to school with, people I know, sorority sisters, school friends, both high school and college, people I work with. It was always just people I met out, you know, like I knew. And then I started sharing my weight loss journey slowly but surely. You know, I, I connected with some people, but nothing too serious. But then once I really got into the thick of my journey and then started doing coaching and personal training, my Instagram became a business. <laughs> and I get most of my business from not just Instagram, social media in general, but most of my clients, they find me on social media some type of way. So Instagram is Bay. You can reach me on uh, Instagram at my sexy is strong, of course. Even though it is like a business account, like I try to show people that I'm a real person. So you will see on my stories things about my life a little bit, and my daughter, and all that kind of stuff. But it still is a business page. I still I, I post a lot about fitness. Of course, now that I'm doing YouTube, I post a lot about that. But that's where you find me the most. I spend a lot of time on Instagram. I am on Facebook. I do have a Facebook page for My Sexy is Strong. And then I also am on Facebook. Y'all, <laughs> I forgot this does this. Oh, my God. <sighs> the wine stopper fell out and it scared the hell out of me. Okay, let me just. Oh, I'm scared to put this back on. This is going to scare me. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> For our tzatziki sauce, because we are making tzatziki sauce for our, you know, chicken gyro skillet, I grated up some cucumber, and I'm just making sure that all of the liquid is out. So I have my little mesh strainer, and I'm using the paper towel and just pressing it down to get as much water out of here as possible. Looks like it, pretty much all the water is gone, so that's good. 
cucumbers are full of water so yes you will have a lot of water honestly most vegetables are um so if you have a recipe such as this that asks you to take out the water don't skip that part because it's going to make a huge difference in the quality of whatever your final product is supposed to be. So we don't want watery tzatziki. So we definitely wanna make sure we're taking all the liquid out. I'm actually gonna use the paper towel again and make sure this is, let me just put, put all of this in the paper towel and wring it out. I do not want no watery tzatziki. I love tzatziki. Do y'all like like, Greek style food. I've been eating a lot of Mediterranean Greek style food, but it's so light and I love any type of recipe. Oh wait, I need this. I love any type of recipe that doesn't have like a whole lot of like oil and fat in it. Um, oh, I'm so glad I did this. Okay. There's a lot of water still coming out. See, I need to follow my own advice. Make sure you have all the water coming out. Uh oh, all the water. You can use cheesecloth. Of course, you can use paper towels. You can still use this, but you're going to have to be pressing. So it's better to have either cheesecloth or some type of paper towel to be able to get all the liquid out. Look, I ain't drunk, so don't don't think I'm drunk, y'all. Why I got stuff over here falling out? But we're gonna clean that up in a minute. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good with all the water. So we're just going to put this, all of our cucumber in our bowl. Then we'll be able to kind of mix up everything. This is making a mess. All right, y'all. Good thing I clean up, right? Speaking of cleaning up, this is a random fact. I love the Method brand antibacterial like disinfectant spray. Oh my God. I buy bottles and bottles of it. I usually buy it at Target. I like the citrus smell because I use like citrus smells, uh, hand, hand soap in, to wash my hands in my kitchen, um, in, in my bathroom, upstairs and things like that. I'll use like lavender. But in my kitchen, I love lemon flavor or any type of citrus flavor or scents. And so the citrus scent of the method Antibacterial spray, highly recommend. And make sure you get all the nastiness, all the germs. And yes, during the, uh, when everybody had to stay at home, the little, when homegirl was out wrecking havoc, that was bae, spraying down everything, okay? All righty. So let's see, make sure, yes, make sure you hit the like button. Celeste is reminding us to hit the like button. She says you can follow me on Instagram. All right. Next question. Next thing for our tzatziki. So we have our cucumber. Blah, blah, blah. Then, um, so now that we have the cucumber, that's the hardest part. The next thing is adding in all the rest of the ingredients. So the garlic, the yogurt, salt, pepper, lemon juice, and dill. So first thing I'm going to do is grate up a clove of garlic. So the next question is, what are your pet peeves? Oh, Lord. And this is off my dome, too. So it's hard to answer without sounding crazy. So... One of my pet peeves is people ignoring me. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, I, I like go crazy when I feel like I'm being ignored, especially when it's like something that is very important to me. And like, I need an answer right now. Like, I hate being ignored, but I'm getting better as I get older. So this particular recipe calls for one clove of gar garlic. Of course, y'all know I love garlic. And so I did two cloves. Let's see. My brother has a comment. What is your comment? I'm all about the Asian food, but Greek food is pretty great. I will highly recommend visiting Greece if you have a chance. Okay. Fun fact. 
also another y'all gonna get all type of random facts y'all say things it kind of makes me think i think that's probably better anyway okay all right so now we got our two cloves of garlic i'm gonna go ahead and add in both of these containers of greek yogurt it's only about five ounces the recipe calls for a cup a cup is eight ounces so it's fine we'll have a little bit more which i probably use more cucumber than the average small cucumber is so it'll all work out we're not really measuring anything we're just going to go off taste but again i will post the link or i'll link the um recipe below and if you want to you know follow the directions and do exactly what she tells you to do that is fine all right so that's the greek yogurt next thing is going to be getting our dill chopped up so i'm going to chop up a little bit of dill i love dill i absolutely love dill it gives a very nice fresh interesting flavor like it, oh god i love dill one of my favorite recipes was from Ina Garden, who's on Food Network. I think I talked about her the last time on my last live. I think we're supposed to have about a tablespoon of dill. Here, let me check the recipe. Yep, a tablespoon of fresh dill. So I'll go ahead and just chop this up. I have some more dill that we're going to use for garnish later as well. Because in my opinion, you can't have too much dill. But Ina Garden growing up was like my fave. I don't know if y'all know her, but she is a Food Network personality. She is bae, y'all. She, oh God, she's so elegant. Like she's like the ultimate entertainer. And that is what I aspire to be. Like in, in another life, I'm going to be like a housewife who has dinner parties all the time and cooks every single meal for my husband and kids. Like... And Ina Garden, even though her and her husband, they don't have kids, but like that's what she did all the time. She was always cooking. She owned a store in the Hamptons and selling like specialty food products, everything. And she had this amazing recipe for fingerling potatoes with dill. You just made them with dill, butter, salt, and pepper. And the fingerling potatoes were so buttery. And that dill on top of the potatoes just took it to a whole nother level, y'all. I love food, okay? No wonder I've always struggled with my weight. I love food too much. Okay. So here's our dill. I'm gonna throw that up in there. All right. Now let's see what else we gotta add in here. Lemon juice calls for a teaspoon, so we'll just do I don't have I have some lemons. If you have fresh lemons, preferably use those. I have some fresh lemons, but they look like they're going bad. So I'll use that for something else. Um, I'm just going to use my lemon juice in the bottle. A few drops there. Some salt and pepper. A little salt and pepper. I'm going to also add in a tiny bit of garlic powder because y'all know me. And then I'm also going to add in a few dashes of red wine vinegar. And that's going to give it a nice little oomph at the end, right? Just a few dashes of red wine vinegar. All right. Now we're just going to mix. And then once I have all this mixed up, I'm going to put some saran wrap on top and let it cool in the fridge while we go and do the next, all the other parts of our recipe. Oh, this looks so good. I'm gonna show y'all in a minute. Looks amazing. Gotta taste it first, of course. All right, and it's thick. I love a thick tzatziki. Put a one in the chat if you've had tzatziki sauce and you like it. Let me know. So here is how it looks. Mm. That's good. I need some more salt though. A little bit more salt. I actually want a little bit more garlic. 
because I love garlic and you can never have too much in real life. All right. Mix, mix, mix. Actually, let me put a little bit more power or pepper. This is what I like about cooking too. I like that you can really kind of customize it to your taste buds. Like, especially when it comes to the seasonings. Like, I am, I try to be very mindful of how much oil and sugars I'm using in my food. But when it comes to seasoning, oh, baby girl, look. I'm going to keep going because flavor is important. Mm. Okay, baby girl. Here, let me taste this for real, for real. Mm. That's good. All right. I knew Celeste would say this. Ina Gardner, Barefoot Contessa. Love her. Yes, I love Ina Gardner. What? What is what is Tony saying? I should have come over today. You said you was going to come over the next time I was streaming on Sunday. Tony says one. Tara Gaines in the chat. Hi, Tara. I saw your wish list. Can you tell me what is magic butter? Oh, my God. The magic butter machine. <laughs> the magic butter machine helps infuse butter with herbal products. One of my last lives, people were talking about infusing the butter. So, you know, I was I was told to put that on there. I was told by someone. All right. I'm going to let this. Mm. I'm going to cover it up with some saran wrap. And then so today we're doing 15 get to know me so y'all can ask questions if you like about me i have 15 facts i'm sharing that my daughter found questions online and i'm just answering the questions that she picked for me to answer for y'all we're making a chicken euro skillet i just made some tzatziki from scratch using the skinnytaste.com recipe love her I'm going to link that in the description so you will be able to catch it once we're done here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is season our chicken. I had chicken thighs left over from when I made the, uh, what you call that? What I make the other day? Blackened chicken. So that's what we're using again. Look, food is expensive. And cooking for y'all is actually kind of expensive. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm like, some some of my recipes, I'm like, okay, what can I use that's already in here? Because I'm tired of buying new stuff at the grocery store. I already had those chicken thighs, so that is what we're using. But if you like chicken breasts, feel free to use that. We're cutting it up. I'm gonna just cut it up like I've been cutting it up. Y'all know I like the strips for the chicken thighs. So I'm gonna cut it up that way. But you can also kind of dice it. And I might even... Do a smaller strip actually so for our brunch mimosas i have strawberry mango mimosas i pureed strawberries and mango with a little monk fruit and then i'm gonna add in my sparkling wine i'm using moscato sparkling wine today it's already almost exploded over here the wine topper flew off all right so what's the next question do you have any bad habits huh, of course I mean, don't get me wrong. I am like damn near perfection, but at the same, I'm just playing y'all. I am not. Um, do I have bad habits? Yes. I procrastinate like hell. Procrastinate like hell. I'm a huge procrastinator. Um, contrary to popular belief, this is not necessarily a bad habit, but I'm actually, it is a bad habit because I actually am very sensitive, even though I try to act like I'm a G. Look at me getting vulnerable with y'all. Um, so I'm pretty sensitive. And so because of my sensitivity, I tend to th take things personally and I tend to overthink a lot. But as I mature in age and, and work on like personal development and growth and just trying to be a better version of myself, like I'm really kind of getting, trying to get out of that. And when I find myself having those, mm, having those little moments, I try, I try to correct myself. So what I say, 
I procrastinate. I overthink. Let me see if I can give you all a third one. I do have bad habits. I'm not going to lie. Um, when I get stressed out, I have like a really bad attitude. Like really bad attitude. And the people closest to me get it the worst. That is a terrible habit of mine. And so because I know that about myself, I try to stay to myself as much as possible if I'm not having a good day because I am very self-aware of myself. I can wake up and almost know what type of day I'm having instantly. And I know things before they happen, if it's going to piss me off. So like, I'm like, all right, today is one of those days you got to stay to yourself. But I'm a mom. <laughs> so there's never staying by myself. So the, my worst habit is having an attitude when I'm stressed out and my daughter gets the attitude and then I got to go back and apologize to her. I, I do that more than I'm willing to admit, but it's not too bad. I've actually gotten better with even telling my daughter, you know what? I'm not having a good day. So just know that mommy's not having a good day. <sighs> Things ain't going that well. And so from there, she know, don't. Because, you know, kids, they will test you. I ain't gonna, I don't care what nobody say. You know, it's some moms on the on the internet that be trying to act like they perfect. No. Children will definitely test you. They they know. It's like they almost know, like, oh, today is the day, right? My daughter know when to ask me certain questions because she know, like, if I'm having a bad day, she know to ask me. Because guess what? Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> she know. Can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah, girl, go ahead. Cause I'm having a bad day and I can't be, I can't be bestie today. I cannot be bestie. So yeah, those are my bad habits. I'm a, I'm a procrastinator. So I'm just cutting up my chicken thighs for our chicken gyro. I see Mona D is in the building. My brother asked, do I still, um, Mona D is in the building before I go to there. Sorry. Let me greet Mona as she should be greeted. Cause Mona is the best moderator. Thank you, Mona, for joining. Make sure y'all check out Mona's channel. Mona, please link your channel below. We are trying to get, me and Mona both trying to get monetized, okay? And we're trying to get Mona to her 1,000 subscriber mark. So make sure y'all subscribe to Mona if y'all haven't already. For our chicken euros, we are making, we're using chicken thighs. My wine bottle, it just popped again, but I'm going to leave it there. All right, so I'm cut up my chicken thighs the long way, like strips. And then I'm just going to cut them again. The, so they're not going to be as long of a strip. So oh, let me cut this up too. Ooh, these are too big. I, I don't, I want like bite sized pieces. I don't want like diced, but just bite size, nice little piece. Here, let's see. About here. All right, I have about a pound of chicken thighs here and um, I'm just cutting them up. You can dice it if you want. You can also use chicken breasts if you want, but I had chicken thighs left from the other day. So here we are. Look, y'all, y'all keep, if y'all don't like chicken thighs, y'all missing out. Not only is chicken thighs, like they're more flavorful than chicken breasts. They don't dry out as fast. They're cheaper. Like, are you kidding me? Chicken thighs are usually almost always on sale. You can you you can either get them. I know a, a couple of my grocery stores, either they have them on sale or they do like a buy one, get one free. Typically, they raise the price to do that. So just be mindful of that, y'all. It's really not like a great sale, but psychologically, it makes you feel like you're getting something else. OK, that's another fun fact about me. I'm at the grocery store damn near every day. So my sister... I don't think she's on this live today, but my sister can tell you nine times out of 10 when I'm talking to her, I'm at the dang on grocery store. My brother offered a comment or a question in the chat. Let me see what he says. I don't know what he's talking about. Do you still hate getting up in the mornings like when you were little? I don't feel like I hate getting. Okay, y'all. I don't like getting up in the morning. I lied. I really don't like getting up in the morning, but because I'm a, an adult with a business and a child and responsibilities, I get up. And actually, like, 
I don't mind getting up early. I just don't like getting up when I haven't had a lot of sleep. And I feel like that's normal. What Derek say? He says being analytical is not a bad trait. I don't think so. But I do think that um, I and a lot of women have the ability to overthink things. Um, and it's so funny. Like I overthink so much and then it, it slaps me in the face. <laughs> it slaps me in the face. Look, even Mona agrees. They sure will test you. Girl, won't they? Like, I love my baby to death. Like, actually, I was going in. I ain't trying to tell her business, y'all. But, y'all, I was going off earlier, okay? And I was, like, letting her know. Like, your mama don't play, and I will come up. I will, I will drag somebody about my child. Let me just say it like that. I literally will drag someone, okay? Don't play with my baby. I love her to death. However, you know. Kids, they'll try you. You know, you know what? One of the things that I love about, and this just made me think, Maggie the substitute teacher, y'all know I love her. She's on YouTube, Instagram, all of that. She just hit 10,000. Actually, she's almost at like 13,000 now. Subscribers on Instagram. But one of the things I love is that her sons, they come on her lives like pretty regularly. And like Maggie is so wholesome. She's so sweet. Like she she is way more like de- refined than I will ever be, right? And so she her kids will come on and Maggie goes from like soft, sweet Maggie with the very soothing voice to like mama Maggie. And she just be like, the facial expressions are hilarious. And that just goes to show you that the children, they will test you. It don't matter who you are. You can be leave it to Beaver, you know, Joan Cleaver, mom, and your kids will still try you. They will still try you. All right. So we cut up our chicken. Let me get this chicken madness away. Um, I'll use a spoon. I'll use a spoon to mix this up, not my hand. So we're going to season our chicken very simple. We're going to use our Greek all-purpose seasoning, Cavenders. You can get this anywhere. I got... You literally can get this anywhere. I've seen it at every single grocery store in the world, okay? So we have that. We're going to also add in some onion powder, some garlic powder. I'm going to use some of my green seasoning because y'all know I love it. That'll allow us more herbal flavors and taste. What does Derek say? When you're having a bad day, are you easy to cheer up or you just... Um, actually I am easy to cheer up. Like it doesn't take much for me to be like, okay, I'm over. Like, you know, talking to certain people in my life, friends and family usually does. It's so funny. Like my sister almost, it seems like here lately, it's like she knows instinctually that like it's time to check on Terry because she'll call me and she'll be like, are you okay? Because I'll answer the phone with this. We always FaceTime and I'll answer the phone with this death stare, like. Acting like my mama, rude and mean, and looking at her like, why you even call me? And she's like, you okay? <laughs> my brother has approached me. My brother's in the chat. He knows the look that I'm talking about. And I'm looking at him like he's crazy. So in our chicken, I just put in some uh, dried oregano as well. I'm going to add in some paprika. What else did I want to put in here? Some lemon pepper. This is the Kinder's no salt version. Make sure you pick it up. Sam's Club, Sprouts, those are the places I've seen with it. Let me add in the green seasoning. All right. What does Mona say? It's like when they wait till you get on the phone to ask you for something. I had to have a whole conversation with my daughter the other day. I was, what was I doing? I was getting ready to go to the bridal shower that I went to yesterday. And my daughter comes in my room and she's like telling me about this permission slip that she needs me to sign. I'm like, Avery, I cannot do anything about that right now. Why don't you ask me later when I come back or like when I'm not doing anything that way I can actually sign it. And that is something that she does a a lot. Like Mona says, (laughs) kids will literally come to you when you're the most busy and like think that you're supposed to drop everything and ask and answer them. And I think it's terrible when parents do it. Of course, if it's an emergency, yes, you give them that attention. But you do not just drop everything all the time for your kids because that's not teaching them boundaries, okay? Like, it is not. And I had to have a whole conversation with her like, look, like, I understand that you might think of something that you want done, 
you need to be mindful when you're coming up to someone and trying to talk to them or ask them about something like ask yourself are they busy you know it's best to go to people when they're not doing anything they're not busy they're not on the phone like don't ask no you gotta have those types of conversations with your kids okay let me catch up to the comments yes we will get monetized this year mona what's up smoke and talk thank you so much for being here y'all make sure y'all check out smoke and talk their podcast is here on youtube mona has dropped her link uh smoke and talk if you haven't please make sure you drop your link um let's see who else is here i saw mona speaking to somebody i didn't see their comment oh miss coleman is in the building hello miss coleman <laughs> Janessa Coleman is in the building. I see her. Oh, wait. It won't let me pull up your comment. Okay, here we go. Thank you so much for being here, Janesta. We are making a chicken gyro skillet. Um, we've already made some tzatziki, our homemade tzatziki sauce. I got some chicken that I've gone ahead and seasoned, cut up and seasoned. We're going to sit this to the side and we're going to work on our um we're gonna work on our potatoes first i'm gonna cut up our potatoes really quickly and then bring them to a quick boil but i'm not gonna cook them all the way boil because we're gonna make like a little we're gonna make a skillet so we're gonna finish everything in the skillet but we're gonna start our potatoes by cutting them up um and boiling them so that'll cut down on the cook time and that'll also prevent us from having to use a lot of oil to cook the potatoes. Because if y'all know, potatoes can... Let's see. Are you still corporate or self-employed or both? I am currently self-employed. I was corporate, but I am no longer. <laughs> um, so yes, I am self-employed. I am a personal trainer, fitness coach outside of youtube and i am also looking to make youtube another form of income why not i do you know i was actually making i'm just gonna dice up oh we're not even gonna have to use a lot of these i really don't need a lot of potatoes i'm gonna dice up the potatoes we want them kind of small you don't want them big kind of think of like home fries when you go to like one of those brunch restaurants let me put this off to the side get all of this out the way while our potatoes are boiling we'll put uh, we'll dice up some of our other vegetables this is going to be very robust okay it's going to be a lot of whole foods we're eating it's going to be healthy because it's going to be stuff that's good for you and we're not like frying anything we're just going to saute everything so i'm just dicing up the potatoes like so nice little dice you don't want them too big because we do want them to be able to cook evenly and cook relatively fast you don't want them to have to take forever to cook so that's why we're going to boil them first for a few minutes and then uh oh then we'll go ahead and finish everything off in the skillet all right what else y'all got going on in here my daughter was clowning today and being super sassy then burst out crying i had to talk to her and she was missing missing her grandpa who passed a little oh i'm sorry to hear that i'm sorry to hear that yeah death was for children is like it's it's difficult um i've tried to my grandmother passed away in 2017 and my grandmother raised me and so me and her or of course everybody in my family were very close to her and avery knew her so um and she was what avery was like five or six yeah she was six um when my grandmother passed away so it was it was rough it was hard but you know you have to have those conversations with them to kind of see like where they at and how they and sometimes they do act out i lost my dad young too that's another fact about me my father passed away when i was 12 years old from kidney failure so um another reason why i'm really big on health and things of that nature because uh, I've had family members die of, you know, different ailments and things of that nature. So as much as we can do to prevent those types of things from happening, I'm here for it. 
But yeah, my dad died when I was young. And like one of the things that I felt like I should have gotten that I didn't was like a lot of like emotional support in terms of like a counselor or something of that nature. That's a hard loss to deal with, especially at 12. That's such a Oh, like I look at my daughter and I couldn't imagine like if she lost me at this age, that would be rough. All the things that are going on in her life right now, it's just like, wow. And to think like I had to kind of deal with that. Like it was at the age where like, you know, I'm going through puberty. I'm confused about everything. And then, boom, you know, so I'm just adding my cut potatoes or diced potatoes into cold water. We'll bring this to a boil. Let me bring up this camera so y'all can see. We're drinking mimosas today, of course. All right, let me answer some of these questions I already have. Number four, do you have any, or no, I already asked, answer my bad habits. If y'all missed it, watch the replay. I talked about my bad habits. What was your first job? My first job was actually, I'm going to cut up one more potato and then we're going to get these to a boil. I don't need a lot of potatoes. I don't want. My first job, actually, I worked at my school. So I went to an all-girls private school in the suburbs of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and my first job was working in, like, the after-school program. They call it homework room, where the middle schoolers. So my school was preschool to 12th grade. And I went there from 5th to 12th grade. And when I was in, when I was in middle school, so middle school at my school was from 5th to 8th grade. And then high school, or... We call it upper school. So lower school was first to fourth. Middle school was fifth to eighth. And then upper school was ninth to twelfth. Shout out to all the private school kids who know what the hell I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> but um, I went to the homework room, and that was something where, like, basically like an after school program, like a late bird type situation where the kids go after school and the parents still working. So my mom worked um, when I first, yeah, when I went to Laurel, so... You know, I stayed there. I think the after school program or the homework room was from like 3.30 to 6 or something like that. And I, when I got to high school, they started allowing like high school students to help out because it started to be like really big. And it was more and more kids there or more girls rather. So um, me and another one of my friends, we worked in there from uh, starting, I think, at 11th grade. So I worked there 11th and 12th grade. And it was fun. I mean, I got to know some of the younger girls. Um, actually, I'm friends with some of the younger girls. Some of the younger girls, they had their sis older sisters were in, in high school at the same time as me. Um, a couple of them, I think their sisters were in the same class as me. So it was fun. It was easy. You know, it, it, I didn't have the typical first job. I've never worked at McDonald's. I've never worked at any type of fast food, um, grocery store, none of that. I, when I went to college, I worked in the mall. I think the most basic place I ever worked as like a little stupid job like that was at the gas station. <laughs> when I was in college, I worked at, it was called Mapco, but it was, it said BP on the outside, but it was owned by Mapco and Mapco had bought up all these gas stations in Nashville. And um, that's where I worked with a whole bunch of people. I have experiences. I actually, y'all, no, nah, I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring this to a boil. All right. And while that's coming to a boil, we're gonna start cutting up some of our vegetables for our chicken gyro. Okay. Um, number six, what college did you go to? I went to Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. Fisk is an HBCU. Shout out to all the Fiskites. Um, and I graduated in 2007 with a Bachelor's of Arts in Sociology. Let's see. <laughs> Derek Gate, or no, Janesta says, uh, my daughter still does that right now. I know, I, I think Derek said he's not a morning person. <coughs> Janesta saying hello to everybody. Smoke and talk. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, Smoke and Talk. They said, please subscribe to our channel. We go live every Monday and Wednesday at 12 noon and 7 p.m. on Friday, Eastern Standard Time. There's a link. Make sure y'all check them out. They're real fun. They smoke and talk, literally. Derek Gaines says, it must be the weather. My daughter came close to the line. I told her I'm about to make a bad career decision. 
they will test the out of you, okay? They will test you, baby. My brother is saying, yes, I know that look. It can turn small animals to stone. Talking to Leslie will definitely brighten my day. Love her to death. My sister, honestly, y'all, like she has just this amazing spirit about her. I, you know, I'm sure she'll listen to this later. She's not in the live today, but my sister's crazy. Everybody in our family, they just laugh and joke. We're all, everybody call her crazy, but it's really just, she has this energy about her. That's, it's a lot. It can be a lot, but it's fun. She's so fun. Even though she secretly, she's very sensitive as well. I know that she's very sensitive, but you know, she's sensitive as well, but she, she really can brighten your day. And so for that, I love her to pieces, okay? And also, like, that's my sister. She's my writer. Her and my brother, they're, like, my biggest fans. Her, my brother, and Avery, my daughter, they all be rooting for me even when I don't root for myself. So shout out to them. All right, so I have a half a red onion. Y'all, I swear, I'm using everything that's in my house already. I ain't even buy a new red onion. So I got a half a piece. I use that. I'm just going to dice this up. Let's move over here. See if the fumes from the onion keep my eyes from burning. All right. Question number seven. What's your funniest memory from high school? God damn. Oh, this hard. Y'all, it's going to be 20 years in May that I, or June that I graduated high school. I don't remember. Let me see. Funniest moment. Hmm. Dang. That's a good question. What happened? Okay. I'll just, okay. Yeah, I'm grown now, so it don't matter. My funniest moment probably was when me and my two best friends. Um, we're all still friends to this day. We have a group chat that we all in, uh, participate in. Me and two of my best friends from high school, we skipped school because at my school, you used to be able, as a junior and senior, first of all, starting whenever you got a car, but especially as juniors and seniors, you could drive to school and they had a parking lot specifically for students. So I didn't have a car in school because I, even though I went to a privileged school, I was not, I did not grow up privileged. Okay. So one of, both of my best friends actually had cars in high school. And for, if you had a study hall on your schedule, you can sign yourself out of school. So we decided to sign ourselves out of school. We went to one of my friend's house. My, okay, my two friends is D and M. I don't want to put them on blast on the internet. So I'm just going to say D and M. So we, I think D is the one who drove and we went to M's house. She lived in the woods um, in one of the Southern suburbs of Cleveland. She lived in the woods. We went to her house. Both her parents was at work, but she had two big ass dogs. They were there. <laughs> I used to be so scared of her dogs. Now I love dogs. But uh, we went to her house. Y'all, we went to the house to smoke weed. <laughs> we call ourselves trying to smoke. <laughs> and I did not at the time. I was still a young girl and I was supposed to be anti-smoking. Yes. You can't be here to listen to this story. Because it's inappropriate. So go upstairs. <laughs> So, yes, y'all, we skipped school to call ourselves, you know, indulgent. That was so funny. Okay, that was the funny story. <laughs> Let's catch up on some more comments because I feel like y'all talking in the comments. Let's see. <laughs> y'all laughing at me. Y'all, I cannot believe that was the one and only time I skipped school and I didn't we didn't get in trouble because we weren't really skipping school. We just signed ourselves out because we used to be able to sign out and you can go to the mall. We would go to the mall and get Chick-fil-A for lunch because we didn't necessarily want what they had in the lunchroom. So we would go to the mall and eat lunch or you some people would go shopping, whatever. I'm telling you, y'all, I went to school with privileged kids. So this is the type of shit that happened. Okay. And Oh, yes. It was so fun. Oh, I, I miss high school. We are all sensitive. Runs in the family. Oh, man. My grandmother, she used to be able to cry like that. It was like on cue. She would be able to start crying. She was so dang on sensitive. No, no one remember high school. Look, it is almost 20 years. I graduated high school. You ain't got, you was not. I'm answering your questions. 
but you cannot come on camera like that. Okay, I'm I'm just telling you, we ain't doing that. Look, you gotta be careful. Okay. No problem smoking talking to these driving. Yes, thank you so much for being here. All right, so let's see. My best trait. I'm gonna do my best because I'm a trainer, so I don't feel like this is inappropriate for me to say. I'm gonna do my best physical trait and I'm gonna do my best, like, I don't know, personality trait. Um, my best physical trait, of course, are my legs. Hello, I'm a trainer. Um, and then personality wise, I think that I'm just, I think my best trait is that I am a pretty positive person. I can be a realist, but I have like a, I've been told, this is the first time I've ever been uh, described like this, but I've been told I have like a fun, bubbly personality. And I think that just comes from me being positive. Like I really like to see people get along. I hate when I have like, friend groups and people start having beef and stuff like I've had a few situations where like I've been in group chats and people in the group chat they got into it and I'm like dad we was having so much fun like let's just keep having fun like I try to look at life um from a perspective of the glass half full as opposed to the glass half empty so I feel like that's my best personality trait all right so I'm gonna refill my mimosa we're having fun the more I drink, the more I'll talk. So ask away. Just kidding. I'm not drunk. <laughs> um, all right. So favorite color, number nine. Favorite. You know what? Y'all tell me what you think my favorite color is. Yo, what do you think my favorite? Don't say nothing, Avery. Do not say nothing. Every time you smoke a cigarette, it's in your clothes. It is. So we didn't. Janesta, Miss Coleman, let me tell you something, girl. When we signed out, because I did not skip school, when me, D, and M, when we signed out of school that day, we weren't smoking cigarettes. I'll just say it like that. We weren't smoking cigarettes. We were smoking something that now kids, if they left school, well, technically you got to be 21, but, you know, it ain't illegal no more what we were smoking back in then. And I didn't even know how to smoke at them days. All right, tell me in the comments <coughs> what y'all think is my favorite color. We got one person with his guess. Anyone else? Okay, so for our skillet, y'all know, like I said, I want it to be robust. So I'm going to cut up um, a, a yellow squash. I have some cherry tomatoes that I'm going to have, and then I have a couple orange peppers for my little sweet peppers I bought the other day. So I'm just gonna cut these up in small bite-sized pieces. You can cut it up any way you like. Look, you can use really any types of vegetables for this particular recipe. I love squash. I love vegetables in general. So, and like I said, the last, on my last live, you know, it's, I try to find very creative ways to add in veggies. Um, but then again, at the same time, like I'm fortunate enough that my daughter is not like one of those real picky eaters. So we eat pretty much everything over here. Okay. Okay. We love veggies, all veggies too. We even eat Brussels sprouts. Don't we, Avery? She said, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> okay, Miss Coleman, you catch my drift, sis. You catch my drift. Okay. All right, y'all. So my favorite color... Of course, it's pink. If you haven't noticed, look at all of my branding, y'all. Even for my personal training business. Hello, y'all. Your girl love pink. I love pink. Okay? So, fun fact also about me. I am in a sorority. And um, it ain't no secret. Shoot. Uh, my sorority is all over my page. I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And our colors are crimson and cream. So we wear red all the time. Y'all, I usually have to go out and buy things for sorority events that are red. And I'm actually pretty active in my chapter. I hold an office here in the chapter, the local chapter, everything, right? But y'all, 
my favorite color is pink. So I buy a lot of pink, like a lot of pink. I love pink. I went to a bridal shower yesterday. The lady uh, that is getting married in the bridal shower, she's an AKA. So of course we had to wear pink to her bridal shower. I was the only Delta there looking fine as hell in my pink. Okay. I love pink. Favorite color. I've always loved pink. As a, a young girl, I swear I was like a Barbie. I loved Barbie because Barbie's favorite color was pink. My grandfather, my father's dad, he bought me a Barbie car. Y'all know like the big wheels. It was like a Barbie convertible car. I used to ride around in the neighborhood running people over. Beep, beep, move out my way, okay? That was before Ludacris came out, but I was already on that vibe. Move, okay? Love pink. <laughs> Next question, number 10. Do you prefer tea or coffee? Coffee, hands down. Y'all see my Keurig that don't even work no more. That's, I'm so mad about this damn Keurig. I pay, I don't even know how much I pay for this Keurig, but I am so mad. Like, I'm one of those types of people that feels like if I pay for something, that need to last me a long time. Like, I don't feel like I should be spending my money on stupid stuff. Honestly, I like to spend my money on food. So I don't want to have to buy certain things. Like, this is why I like expensive handbags. Because they last. When you buy a designer handbag, that thing can last you forever. I have a Louis Vuitton bag I don't have since 2006, 2005, 2006. It's 2023, and that bag still looks brand new. If I would have bought a bag for twenty dollars from Walmart, it would have been broke the next year. Okay, that's another fun fact about me. <laughs> All right, so we have our yellow squash. I'm gonna cut up. Still waiting on our potatoes. Still waiting on potatoes. I'm going to just dice up the sweet peppers. This is going to be a nice little addition. We're going to cook them, everything, even the tomatoes. We're going to put, not the uh, cucumbers, because we're going to cut up cucumbers. The cucumbers will not go in until like the very end of the skillet. But um, all the other veggies, we'll put them in, kind of get them soft. But I still want them to have a little crunch. If you choose to want them to have, you know, to be cooked more, do what you like, girl. Or fellas, you know, I got the fellas and the ladies watching. I love the fact that our community that we are building here is diverse. You know, we got the ladies, we got the gents, we got some young folks, we got some seasoned folks. I love it. All right. What inspires you? Um, what inspires me? The, hmm, that's a good question. Like, if there's any specific thing, I don't know if there's any specific thing that inspires me. Like, I just want to be a better person in general. I strive to be a better mother. I know I can improve in that area for sure. Um, I strive to be a better business owner. Um, I strive to be a better family member, uh, sister, brother, or I'm not a brother, <laughs> sister, aunt, you know, cousin, friend for sure. My friends are basically my family. Um, here, let me just cut this up even some more. So, yeah, I think it's just the my inspiration comes from my desire to just be my best me, really. Oh, no, Celeste, they actually came up pink on my end. It came up pink. I don't know if it's coming up red on, like, y'all's end, but when I look at it, it's pink. I remember buying you a crap ton of pink stuff, tiles and beddings for college. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell y'all this story. So y'all know I graduated in, I graduated high school in 2003 from my private all girls school. It was a class of like 56. So it was only six black girls in the class y'all. And only two of us went to HBCUs. My other friend, she went to Hampton. Shout out to her. Actually, it's so funny y'all side note. Me and that friend used to have all types of, like, she, that was the one who worked in homework room with me. She wanted to go to Hampton because, like, she was a legacy at Hampton. At the time, I really wasn't tripping about going to HBCU, but thank God I went to HBCU. I would be so much different than I am today if I didn't go to HBCU because I was on a, another path that was not fruitful for me. Um, If you catch my drift. Uh, uh, so she went to Hampton. I went to Fisk. 
Um, and she is legacy for AKA and I am legacy for Delta. And we used to have rivals about this. But um, when I graduated high school, we had like a little trunk party for me. Um, and a trunk party, if you're not familiar, is when people come to like basically like a graduation party and people just buy you gifts um, and things so you can take to college. And so since I was going away to college, I live, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I went to college in Nashville, Tennessee. So it's like two states away, eight hour drive. And people bought like all types of stuff for me, for my collar, for my dorm room. So bedding, I remember somebody bought me, might've been my cousin. My favorite color is pink. So everything I got was pink. And my cousin, I want to say she bought me these amazing pink Ralph Lauren towels. I always been a little bougie, Lord Jesus. So she bought me these pink Ralph Lauren towels and my neighbor from down the street, she had an embroidery machine. She was a housewife and like, and I didn't grow up in a, like a, 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 a nice suburb. I grew up in a suburb and it was a hood suburb, but we had housewives in my neighborhood and she was very creative. She sewed and did embroidery and she embroidered all of my towels that I got from school. I had pink sheets. Y'all, everything was pink. It was ridiculous. Everybody, when I first went to Fist, thought I wanted to be AK Lord, because I had all this pink. And I never, it didn't even register to me that me going to school with all this pink would have people looking at me side. But hey, whatever. Whatever. Let's see. My cousin got married two weeks ago. The colors were pink and white. Very beautiful. I love pink. It's just an amazing color. It's so girly. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hibiscus tea. Okay. All right. What inspires you? I already answered that. Number 12. What is your favorite movie? Let's see. Did I cut up everything? Yes, I did. All right, so I have some tomatoes. I'm going to just slice up a few of them. Y'all see I'm using my bowls. Derek, thank you so much for the bowls. I love them. I'm just going to slice up a few tomatoes. My daughter doesn't even like tomatoes, so there's no point in me cutting up all of these tomatoes. I'm just slicing them in half. So what is my favorite movie? I have actually have two all-time favorite movies. The first is Pretty Woman. The second is Dirty Dancing. Love them both. I can watch them a billion times over. Y'all, this is going to be so good. I can't wait. It's going to, once we finally start cooking, for real, for real, it's going to go really fast. So that's a good thing about this. The hardest part is waiting on the potatoes to boil. That's the most part. Let me see. This should be going. I don't understand why it's taking so long to boil. Well, it did start from cold water. Keep that in mind. When you do potatoes, they start from cold. So, here, let's get another bowl for these tomatoes. All right. Any questions? Look, I'm giving y'all the opportunity. To answer, I'll answer almost anything. Almost anything. Nothing too crazy. All right. So, yes, thank you so much, Derek. You didn't miss anything, Smoke and Talk. I've just been rambling on, answering. So my daughter picked the 15 questions for me to answer for, for y'all to get to know me. Because I'm, I'm here to build a community, right? Like, I won't... Um, I'm going to cut up some, actually, you know what? Let me open this one. I'm going to cut up some more cucumber. I want to build a community and I want y'all to feel like, I don't want you, I'm, I'm not a phony person. I, I, can't, I don't know how to be phony. You know, some people that get on this, this internet, they try to portray people that they're not, y'all going to get me good, bad, and the ugly, maybe. And so... Like, you get what you get. If you don't like it, all right. If you do, I'll switch you, okay? So, with that being said, you know, I want people to know that I am a real person. So, I feel like this is just a good way to get to know me. So, I have my daughter pick out 15 questions from this website um, to for me to answer, just so y'all can get to know me. Y'all can ask me any questions, anything you're curious about. 
I'll answer almost anything. If I feel like it's too much, I ain't gonna answer. I'm gonna be honest, okay? <sighs> oh, look who's here. Squeegee kids, shout out to you for being here. We're actually using your pot that you bought me on the wish list. Thank you so much. We're boiling our potatoes. No action movies, not as my favorite movies, no. Like I'll watch them. I'm the type of girl that, y'all, I'm really girly. Like, yes, I be in the gym lifting heavy weights. I actually work out with three different men on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Three there's so I'm a trainer, of course, and I work out with the gym owner and two other trainers in the gym every Tuesday and Thursday or every Tuesday and Wednesday. And I actually am able to keep up with them for the most part. Of course, certain exercises they live way heavier than me, but they're men. I'm not a I'm not a man. I'm a woman. So but I can keep up with them. And I actually be going in a much faster pace than them because I'm used to that from my trainer. However, despite the fact that I can do all of that, I have physical strength. Let me tell you, I'm real girly, okay? Hello. I love being in the kitchen with my little Joan Cleaver dress and my apron. Cooking nice, tasty, delicious meals for y'all. <laughs> my daughter looking at me like, shut up. You can't do romantic movies. You should, okay? Okay um who is your fitness idol my fitness idol oh she's not on here what happened to the picture i took it off so my fitness idol it her name is um shanique grant she was actually a bodybuilder and she was miss olympia women's physique 2019 and 2020 in 2021 another lady won and then she retired from bodybuilding so when i was going through my fitness journey and losing all of this weight um i realized that one of the reasons why i was so big was because i have a lot of natural muscle on my body and i realized how i am suited for bodybuilding right and so that was a goal and it kind of still is of mine to get eventually get on stage and the category or the class that I most likely would be in because of how much natural muscle I have on my body will be women's physique. And when I found out about her and like her story and her body, good Jesus, she doesn't bodybuild anymore. She's not competing rather, but honey, off season, sis look good. She got the thick thighs and all that kind of stuff. So I love her. I love her. She's really young too. Young girl, but she is amazing. Do you like any sports? Um, I'm not really big on sports anymore. In high school, I played volleyball. Middle school, I played um, basketball. I played softball a little bit. I was on the field hockey team for about five minutes. Keep in mind, y'all, I said I went to a private school, so that's why I know about field hockey. Um, <laughs> so, but, so I played sports a little bit in high school. And then um, I used to love baseball growing up. I'm from Cleveland, so I used to watch the Cleveland Indians. Okay, I know they got a new name now, but when I loved them, they were the Cleveland Indians. My favorite baseball player was Kenny Lofton, number seven from Chicago. He was so fine. I swore I was going to marry him, despite the fact I was 11 and 12 and he was 30-something. But, you know. Uh, I need something for my... I don't know. Here, I'll just keep them right here. So yeah, I go to the Sun Phoenix Suns game. Um, one of my sorority sisters always giving me free tickets. So I go to the Phoenix Suns games a lot. I'm from Cleveland, so I'm a huge LeBron fan. All right, I'm gonna let these kind of chill a little bit longer. We're still waiting on them. They're finally coming to a boil. But I don't watch sports regularly. Will I watch sports? Yes. I'll go to a sporting event. I love hosting. Um, I love hosting Super Bowl parties because I like to entertain. And so I'm here for the fun and a fellowship and the halftime game. I could care less about football. I've tried to get into it. If I had a man who loved football, then maybe I would get more into it. But that is not my reality. So I don't care. <laughs> that, that is what it is. 
so all right yes Derek I am from Ohio Cleveland to be exact yes the pot came in very handy thank you so so much do I take any supplements no well I have like vitamins probiotics that I take I don't take any supplements um the most I've ever taken was like SARMs which is like not like they're not like PEDs, like performance enhancing drugs. They're kind of like vitamins, but they're they're a little above vitamins. It kind of helps you build muscle, gain a lot of strength, break down body fat. When I was deep into like bodybuilding and really trying to go that route, like I was exploring all of that kind of stuff. Now, I can't say it. I can't say it. Have any celebs dropped into your live chats or comment section? Mm, no, not like actual celebrities. No. Blogger, like Insta or like, yeah, Instagram famous people. Yes, but like actual celebrities. No. When you work out, do you do, do you, wait, when you work out, Lord Jesus, I'm slow. Do you do one body part a day or do you do two body parts like back and buys? Check. Okay, so the way that I do my splits, um, I'll just tell you on my workout schedule, the one that I aspire to have, <laughs> if I'm being good. Uh, Mondays are always leg days. Typically with my leg days, I break them down. So I do hamstrings and glutes on Monday. Tuesday, I do back or yeah, I do back. And then I'll also do biceps because biceps are the secondary muscle that you work when most you're doing most back movements. Um Two Wednesday is shoulder and triceps because triceps are typically the secondary muscle you work when you're working shoulder. And then Thursday is rest. When I was working out with my trainer, I would do um, legs with him. We did a lot of hamstrings, but now that I'm just training myself on leg days, on Fridays or actually Saturdays, I do quads and glutes. This past week, I didn't work out on Monday. I missed my leg day. So this Friday, this past Saturday, or actually yesterday, I did both hamstrings, quads, and I also did glutes. I'm always focusing on glutes. I have no problem letting people know I'm trying to grow these glutes. No, I am not bootylicious naturally, but your girl been able to do a little something, okay, in the gym. So you don't have to get no BBL. Just come see me. No, you did not. Derek Gaines. Mm -mm. Derek, now we've been friends this whole time. All right, I want these to cook a little bit longer, y'all. Okay, we've been friends this whole time. Don't do that. I love Kenny Lofton. <laughs> Let's see. I've been to 23 of the 32 baseball stadiums. Cleveland has the best food. Thank you, squeegee kid. Yes. First of all, Cleveland has great food. Don't get me wrong. I think Chicago is definitely going to always be superior to Cleveland. But since Chicago is a food capital of the world. Chicago has amazing food. But Cleveland? Cleveland is literally like a mini Chicago, y'all. Like most Midwestern cities, Cleveland, Chicago, Detroit, we all have that in common where we have it really is like a, a melting pot. So you get a lot of different types of people. We have a lot of Eastern European folks in, in Cleveland. So like you get the corned beef sandwiches. You get like the little Jewish uh, bakeries, the Slavic place. We got a lot of Italians there. Like, man, it's so much good food back home. People sleep on my city, okay? Y'all sleeping on my city. Don't get me wrong. I ain't going back. I ain't moving. I ain't moving back. However, uh, Cleveland, don't sleep on it. If not personal training, what would you be doing? Oh, I was about to say, I thought that was a question. It's not. Um, realistically, or my dream, <laughs> realistically, if not personal training, I'd probably still be doing recruiting, um, in corporate America. Cause that was my last job. And I have had a job since being a personal trainer, um, doing recruiting. So that was my last job, corporate job. Um, I've been very open about the fact that I used to work for child protective services in both Arizona and in Oklahoma. Okay, I'm gonna take these off. Yay! Yes. All right, let's see. All right, I'm gonna give him one more minute. So yeah, I'd be doing, probably doing recruiting. My dream job, 
a stay at home wife and mother. <laughs> you know, Derek, we can show each other love because we're from Ohio. So I'm just going to forgive you for being from Tennessee or from Cincinnati. Cincinnati is great because it gives me something to look at when I was driving through to go from Ohio or from Cleveland to Nashville when I was in college. <laughs> I need to find a winning football team. Mm, I, I don't know nothing about that. Right? Look, my brother about to come after you. All right. So favorite movies. I already said that. What is my favorite animal? My favorite animal, elephants. I'm a Delta. One of our 22 founders collected elephants. We do too. Period. And elephants are so cute. They're so cute. They're so intelligent. Like they have great memories. They're wise animals. Fun fact, I wouldn't do it today, but back in 1999, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I went to Thailand when I was 14 and I got to ride on an elephant in Thailand. Fun fact about me. So yes, I love elephants. Y'all over here talking about Bay, and we are not doing that, okay? Since he looked okay from the road, only driven through it at night. So I used to work for an international shipping company that's yellow and red. And they have their hub in Cincinnati, in the airport. That's actually, it's a Cincinnati airport, but the airport is actually on the Kentucky side. Because Cincinnati is literally on the border of Ohio and Kentucky, if you're not familiar. And so I went there. I worked there here in, in Arizona, but I went to Ohio. Um, one of the things that they do, they send all their employees to the hub. And you go and you uh, get to tour inside of an airplane that doesn't have any seats or anything. That's actually pretty cool. So I went there, I was in Cincinnati, and we got to eat at this, Max, hush, sorry y'all. So we got to eat at this amazing restaurant, I'll have to look it up, I can't, of course I can't think of the name, but it was a really nice steakhouse, Our the company, they actually did it up for it, it was really nice, I enjoyed that trip so, so much, probably too much, that trip was so fun. Like, y'all, I'm so glad I was, like, older because a lot of the, they get a lot of college kids that work for that company. I ain't going to shout them out because forget them. But um, they get a lot of college kids. That that's their first job out of college, and they send them to Cincinnati. So you you a college kid, and your job paying for everything and sending you off. Y'all, the stuff that has happened on them trips, they be. I knew a married woman that had an affair on that trip. I'll just say that. It was some crazy stuff. Some crazy stuff. Oh, Janessa, when is my birthday? August 21st. I'm a Leo. I'm a Leo. Oh, Derek, you work for them too? Cool. So you know who I'm talking about. The big yellow machine, right? You already know. You already know the big yellow machine. Okay, let's see. That restaurant. Oh, Tony. Okay, so my brother also worked for them as well. He used to work for them. So he knows what I'm talking about because he went on the trip too. It was fun. And Derek, since you were already there, I don't know if they, I'm sure they had y'all just go and do like all of the trainings and stuff. It was actually really fun. I enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie. I really liked working for that company. I did, but they started playing, so I had to go. Um, Let's see. Do I like dogs or cats? Of course. I actually really like animals. All right, let me take this off. Let's drain our potatoes. All right. So I'm going to sit the potatoes on the stove. I'm going to bring this pan so we can start up our food. Y'all, it's going to cook so fast. You're going to be like, wait, what happened? All right. Turn this on. I forgot my brother worked there. But yes, I love animals. I have learned this in my later years of life that animals are just so fun and cute. So I'm going to start out by cooking up the chicken 
I'm going to cook up the chicken and then I'm going to remove it. Okay. So the chicken, cooking up the chicken first is going to help us get that great flavor. Oh, squeegee kid. He said he making fajitas tonight. So if you didn't join in the beginning, y'all know I love drinking mimosas on Sunday. I don't have, I don't know how many y'all done, y'all counting, but I'm at home. So, so we're having strawberry mimosas or strawberry mango mimosas. I pureed some strawberries and mangoes. <laughs> pureed strawberries and mangoes, added in a mon little monk fruit. The strawberries and mangoes were actually frozen. Love buying frozen fruit. I actually buy frozen fruit a lot because I like to use them for smoothies. All right. So I see that my pan has uh, it's coming. It's some smoke. We're going to add in our chicken thighs. I'm just going to put it in here and let it sit here. Try to make sure you spread it all out so all of the chicken... Can reach the surface of the pan turn it up pretty high so that you can get a nice sear remember searing your food is where the flavor is at baby okay all right here let me use because we're going to need something to take our chicken out so we'll use that one we're just gonna let this cook here all right. Have I ever worked in a chef? Nope. I've never worked in a, uh, in a restaurant as a chef. I actually used to own a meal prep company here in the Phoenix area. And so I've cooked for people. Fun facts. I have cooked for a, a celebrity of some sort. Um, but I don't know if you, you the guys in the, in the chat, y'all may be familiar. He's a basketball player from back in the day. I think he used to play for... Hold on. Let me Google it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Before I tell you who it is, because I want to be able to, you know. Okay. So he's actually from Phoenix. And he used to play for the Sacramento. Who is Sacramento? Kings. He played for the Sacramento most of his career, it looks like. Anyway, he lives here in Arizona. His name is Mike Bibby. He's a basketball player. He used to play in the NBA. He played in the Jordan era, too. He still has, like, an amazing contract with the Jordan people. Um, so I got to cook for him. I made him meal prep. He actually used to buy meal prep from me. Um, so that was pretty cool. I thought that was cool. But never worked in a... Um, Never worked in a restaurant. And I'm going to be honest, y'all, I have no desire to. I think I've shared this story before, but I'll tell y'all again because we're talking about y'all getting to know me. Y'all getting to know me so y'all just don't be like, who is this girl thinking she can tell me what to do? Um, I did some catering and all that kind of stuff. So... I was asked to be a part of this uh, cooking competition here in Phoenix some years ago. I did not win. I did not win, but that was the closest I got to cooking in a restaurant because it was in a restaurant. So I got to cook in that commercial kitchen atmosphere. It was so fun, y'all. The ladies I met were great. It was so fun to just be around people who enjoy food as much as me. I love to cook. Like, Cooking brings me so much joy. When I'm not cooking on YouTube, I'm usually got my music up, R&B music, blasting. I'm in here dancing and singing along. That's just what I like to do. That's why I'm saying, like, I've realized, I've, look, I ain't meant to be an independent woman. <laughs> just playing, y'all. I, I love business and all that kind of stuff. But I do also, I love like that homemaker vibe. I want to be a fabulous um, entertainer like Ina Garden. Let's see what else. Y'all answering some, y'all asking some great questions. I love it. 
Y'all curious about me, huh? <laughs> Janessa says, today is Sunday. Drink it up. Yes, sis, I'm gonna drink up for you. Being an AZ, Grand Canyon, overrated, yes or no? Yes. But I'm an outdoorsy person. You can actually hike the Grand Canyon. I haven't done that yet. I would love, love to do that. I actually have been um, to this place. Damn, what's the name of it? It's called something. Let me see. I have some pictures. So a couple years ago, of course, I can't. Darn it. I wish I would have known. I should have thought about this earlier. That way I could have pulled the pictures up on my on here so y'all can see. I went to Fossil Creek. That's the name of it. It they or is it yeah, the Fossil Creek. And I went to, to get down to like the where the waterfall is, and there's a cave that you can swim into. Y'all, I thought I was gonna die. I can swim, but I am not a strong swimmer, okay. I swim for survival. I do not swim for sport. So swimming in live water was very scary for me because the waterfalls were coming. And even though the the cave was further along, you still had that rushing water. Y'all, I thought I was going to die. So I had to, we had to hike down eight miles to get to the, uh, to get to where the cave and the uh, waterfall was. So it was like a two hour hike. So we hiked down like five to eight miles, something like that. And then we had to hike back up. And I think that was right when I actually had my back injury from doing too heavy of front squats. My trainer at the time had me doing like super heavy front squats and I messed up my back. And so could y'all imagine me doing eight, a eight mile hike with a messed up back? But I was determined and I got some great pictures and videos. So it was all worth it. But Arizona is an amazing place. I highly recommend people come and visit. It's very outdoorsy. If you're an active person, people love hiking here. My daughter, my dog and I, we go hiking every holiday. I, I do like a long five mile hike with them. It's great. So I highly recommend going to the Grand Canyon and doing the hike. And it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful sight to see. Like, whoo, it's so pretty. So pretty. All right. You remember Mike Bibby? Yes. I'm glad y'all remember him. I think he played like, I'm 37, so he played when I was like a teenager. I think. Would you ever go on Chop? The baskets are insane. Hell no, nah, I wouldn't go. Y'all, I would cry. Because like, like, as much as I like to cook, okay, I will say this. I would have to like prepare. And most of the people who go on Chop they literally like prepare themselves. They do like little challenges to kind of get themselves familiar with like insane ingredients. And like as much as I do know about food, I don't, my grandmother used to say, what you know about whatever, something you can put in a thimble. That's what I feel about with food. What I know about food, I can put in a thimble. Yes, I know a lot, but it ain't enough. So I don't know if I'd ever go and chop. I would really have to like be in my chef bag trying to like, be on some, um, what's the guy's name on Food Network? Elton Brown. Be on my Elton Brown vibes. Would you probably cut someone in that environment? You would probably cut someone in the environment. I have heard folks in those kitchens being, yeah, no, I don't have time for that. Being in the kitchen professionally is a lot. I like to cook for friends and family. Um, I don't mind doing like a catering event here and there. One of my sorority sisters actually just won for the city council here. And I um, I catered for her election night party when she won. I was so happy to be a part of that. And the food was amazing, but like, mm -mm. I can see myself doing that regularly. Janessa's so sweet, y'all. Children get embarrassed when we dance around the house. They do. Girl, my daughter be looking at me crazy. Do you cook meals first before you cook them live? No. <laughs> Some of the meals I've cooked before. All right, so I'm going to remove this chicken off the stove. So we got those flavors in there. Let's keep that there. I'm going to add in a little bit. Actually, I don't even need, I don't even need, uh, I, well, okay. 
just a little bit, just a little bit. Don't laugh at me, Avery. <laughs> so let's start with the red onions. Kind of get those going and then we'll add in the potatoes. I did not chop up garlic. So while that's going, let me chop up some garlic. No, I don't cook the food before. So what I do, my little process, just so y'all can know, um, I think about the type of protein that I want to eat. I really do try to be mindful of what I'm cooking on live because, y'all, I need to, I need to cut. <laughs> I need to cut some body fat. I need to get smaller. I don't necessarily want to be where I'm at right now fitness wise. So I'm like, okay, it can't be something. It really got to be something relatively like healthy, you know? So that's one of the reasons why I try to cook healthier things for y'all. So I think about the type of protein that I want to eat or that I haven't cooked in a while. And then I just go from there. I think about the protein. I think about the types of cuisine, the flavors I want to create. I want to give y'all something different. I'm going to be very honest. Like it's a lot of people cooking on the internet. It is. And I mean, Everyone loves to cook. Everybody loves to eat. But the thing about it is I don't want to bring y'all the same foods that everyone else is cooking. I don't. Y'all notice I don't cook a lot of soul food. We grew up on soul food. All of us. Like everybody in here, I can see we all look alike. We all share a similar background. So we grew up on soul food. I don't need to show y'all how to cook fried chicken. Now, will I cook those types of things sometimes? Absolutely. Because that's my roots. And sometimes I want to eat some soul food. But I'm trying to show y'all different because I want y'all to see how this healthy lifestyle really can work for you. And one of the ways that you can make this healthy lifestyle work for you is by eating things that are full of flavor and a little different. Things that are going to expand your palate. Let's add in the potatoes. So we did boil the potatoes. Let's see. Y'all can see that. See how? I'll just go ahead and eat that. They're just about done, the potatoes. So I'm going to let them sit here for a few minutes. I'm going to also add in this garlic. I'm actually going to go ahead and spray this with some nonstick cooking spray instead of adding straight up olive oil. So yeah, that's my little process. And that's my rationale on the foods that I picked to cook for y'all. But y'all are the viewers. Y'all come here with me and spend time with me. So if there's anything in particular, Derek, I already know you want some gumbo. And I'm going I'm to I'm get you. I'm going to get you. But if there are ever anything that you would like to see me cook, definitely. Especially something to like make it healthier too. Like if it's something that we all grew up on or you grew up on and you really love one of your favorite dishes, but you want to know how to make it a little bit healthier. Sure. I don't mind. All right. So we just went ahead and put the garlic in here. Mix that around. I did spray it a little bit. I'm going to spray it some more. Just kind of let that do its thing because these potatoes are pretty much done for the most part. Let's see. Let's see. This is fun. I like this. That sounds like a great trip. I saw a Grand Canyon for the first time in October. Part of my road trip from LA to home in Minnesota. Cool. I'll, I would love to do one of those cross country road trips. Y'all, I'm glad you brought this up because something that I find with a lot of people in my generation, I'm a millennial. And something I find is that, like, you know, people always talk about, oh, I love to travel. I love to travel. And don't get me wrong. I love to travel, too. Like, I went abroad at 14. How many black kids from East Cleveland, you in Ohio, you know, that's going to Thailand at 14? Not very many, right? So I got that experience. However, I have learned in my older years, especially living out here in the West part of the country, the United States of America has a lot of beautiful places to offer. If you have not explored this country, you are doing yourself a disservice. There are a few places I want to go that you don't typically see a lot of black folks in. I want to go to Oregon. I want to go to Utah. Oh, I've seen some beautiful pictures. I know people from both places. 
and they have i oh lord jesus they just look so amazing california has so many beautiful places um i definitely want to go to seattle and portland because those are food cities i want to go eat but when i went to colorado it was beautiful 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 so if you have the opportunity make sure y'all explore what our country has to offer we have some great trips great locations that can be great trips i'll say that all right i'm gonna start seasoning this actually yeah i'm gonna start seasoning we want to season as we go all right so the last question that my daughter picked i think this is a cute question a little bit which of your parents do you resemble and I actually resemble, to answer that question, y'all look just like my daddy. <laughs> I look just like that man. I am a whole clone. I stole his whole face. This is some or onion powder. We're going to add in some garlic powder. I'm going to add in a little bit of our, so of course, because we're going for like a chicken gyro situation. We're going to use some of the Cavender's, oh wait, let me just put it right here so y'all can see it. Cavender's Greek all-purpose seasoning. Put a little, oh, I just burned myself. Put a little bit of that. Y'all look like my daddy, y'all. Just like him. I'm sure if you scroll down on my Instagram, you'll see a side-by-side -side picture of me and him. I think I posted this some years ago. I look a lot like him. A lot, a lot. He was a handsome chocolate man, okay? <laughs> a handsome chocolate man. And them good looks, it went to me. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Miss Coleman, <laughs> we talked about this the last live. We don't know what Max is. I, I rescued Max from the pound here in Phoenix. And they say that when we rescued him, how old was he, Avery? Seven? Yeah, so we rescued him when he was supposedly seven years old. Um, and they said he was a Chihuahua pug mix. That's a lie. I think they only said that because of his stature and also because he has like a little overbite. So his teeth kind of stick out a little bit. He's so cute. He's funny looking, but he's cute. You know, I love my baby. So we don't technically know if I really wanted to spend the money, I would pay to get him like one of them little blood tests, but I ain't doing all that. I'm with my sexy and strong, cool place, but also overrated. I'm glad that I went. It was after Labor Day, so no crowds. Wait, what are you talking about? Grand King? Facts. Let's say it's facts. Let's see. Thank you for showing us that food can be healthy and tasty. Absolutely. Thank you for recognizing that. Being 90% keto, I'm all for healthy. Okay, I see you. How is that keto journey working for you? It, I, I can't do keto. Y'all know I can't stand keto. But I, I've done keto before. It helps. I think that keto can be a good way to start out your health journey. But... It depending unless you're one of those people, I'm gonna add in a little bit of olive oil, y'all. I need some more oil because we got to put our vegetables in here. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna add in our peppers, our orange peppers. Let's get these around here. This is gonna be really quick. Oh, y'all, this smells so good already. We're going to add in a little bit more salt after we put in the zucchini. My bucket list is long. Crater Lake, Yellowstone. My yes. So I, I have never been diving, ski diving, but I used to be in the ski club when I was growing up. No, Derek, not no boozy gumbo. <laughs> I love that you use fresh ingredients and a lot of your dishes are from scratch. Thank you. Y'all know, look, I love Ina Garden and Ina Garden is from scratch, baby. Okay. 
Oh, this looks good already. I try to make the food kind of colorful too. All right, let's add in our, so we're not going to like overcook our veggies. I don't want the veggies to be real um, soggy. I want them to have a little crunch to them. So I'm going to add in a little bit more regular salt. We're just using some kosher salt, some black pepper. Let's spray it a little bit. Yes, the pan is nonstick, but this is going to be so cute. So on our gyro skillet, we're going to have, we got our homemade tzatziki sauce that we did. And then we got some feta cheese, y'all. Because cheese make the world go round. Squeegee Kid said, my trip was to, was the train from Chicago to San Francisco, then drove the Pacific Highway from Los Angeles, stayed a week in LA, then drove back AZ, North, New Mexico to KC, Minnesota. Wow. Oh, you did that. You have did that. You know what, Derek? <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, look who is here. And I'm late. I don't know if she's still here. But Grown Folk Talk, thank you so much for joining. This is Theo's sister, y'all. Y'all know Theo's been in my chat before. Theo and his sister, Grown Folk Talk, they are both content creators. Make sure y'all check her channel out. Make sure you check her out. Mona, please, if you're in the chat, can you please drop Grown Folk Talk's link? So folks can subscribe to her. Okay. Thank you for the compliment. Yes, Mona, you should. Maggie has shown this seasoning on her page as well. That's what made me remember. That's why I was like, oh, let me cook some um, like Mediterranean style thing. Y'all see me uh, pouring it up. I ain't got nothing to do. Hmm. I got some Netflix shows that I'm going to watch. Oh, keep in mind. So tomorrow, y'all, and the fellas, I want y'all to come back, too. Now, I know y'all don't watch this. <laughs> but tomorrow, I'm going to do a live. I have to see what my schedule's looking like. I think, oh, no, wait. I think I can do a live my normal time tomorrow. Yeah, I don't have any appointments in the afternoon. Um, I want to talk about Love is Blind. The reality, the uh, season season finale comes on today. All right, I'm gonna drop in. Here, wait. Let me taste it first. Let me taste it. Let me see what's going on. Let me see if we need any seasoning. Mm. Okay. No, it tastes great. Oh, it tastes great. I'm going to put a little, I don't want no more salt because we are putting tzatziki sauce and cheese on top. So I don't want it to be salty. Make sure when you're cooking your food, you season it to your taste buds. That's why you, oh shit. That's why you see on recipes, they always say season to taste, taste your food. Y'all see, I got 99 billion uh, spoons up here. All right. All right, let me add in my tomatoes so we can warm those up a little bit. And then we're going to add in a little bit of chicken to kind of mix in, and then we'll put some chicken on top too. This is going to be very colorful. We also have our dill and our cucumbers. If you don't want the tomatoes warmed, you don't have to warm them, but I kind of like warm tomatoes. So this is where we are. Actually, I'm not going to put the chicken in. The chicken is done. If you want to, um, if you want the chicken to be cooked inside of it, you can. But I want to sprinkle the chicken on top. I want to put it on top and then, you know, plate it up real cute. All right. Let's see. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Yes, you need to go on some of these trips, Miss Coleman. Janesta. I love her name. <laughs> 
Yvette loves Max. I love Max too. He's so sweet. What is the salt content in the seasoning you use? That Cavenders. Okay. For a serving size. So the serving size on this is pretty small. It's only a fourth of a teaspoon. Um, it's 241 milligrams. So it's it's salty. I mean, it has a significant amount of salt in it, but it's not like overly salty. So when you're cooking like a, a big dish or, you know, for a lot of people, you can kind of be a little liberal with it. All right. Yes. Come on. You just made me think of something. But yes. Go ahead. What y'all be saying? If you got that good. <laughs> okay. Oh, Grand Canyon was cool but overrated. I mean, you know. It is like a big crater. But it's beautiful though. I think if you're if you're here for like the you know, the beauty of it, then absolutely. I mean, that's why I said do like the 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 um hike because outside of like going to see it, you get there, you have to drive cuz like I'm from Phoenix, so you have to drive a couple hours to get up there and then you're like, "Okay. Let me turn this down." But I like the char. All right. This is about done, y'all. Yep. We're going to plate. Let me see what y'all talking about in these comments. Right. Boozy gumbo. Skydiving. I don't know if I'm willing to do. I would do indoor skydiving, but I'm not. I don't. Mm -mm. How many times a week do I cook? I cook at least three times a week for live. I cook almost every day. I'm going to be honest. I cook almost almost every day. Not every day, but almost every day. When I'm not in the mood, then I'm not cooking. But just about every day I'm cooking. Let's see. Yes, these potatoes actually look really good. Feta cheese. Yes, feta cheese is good. Am I single? I ain't married. <laughs> you single till you married. Ain't that what they say? I'd be the perfect Kendra caller, man, because I like to travel, right? You know what? On Kendra, they always talking about, do, she asked the people on Kendra. <laughs> oh. Um, she asked the people on on Kendra. She always asked the people, "Do the person have to live in the same city?" And she, they be like, "No, I, they can live wherever." I love to travel. Everybody swear they love to travel. I was just about to make a petty joke, despite the fact that I just told everybody they need to explore the United States. But that's because I feel like so many of us go to the same place. I'm so tired of everybody going to Miami and Atlanta. I don't know what to do. And Vegas, too. Even though Vegas is up the street and I love Vegas, I love it. It's so fun. It's laid back, all that kind of stuff. But I love, like, the Western lifestyle anyways. Very laid back out here. But at the same time, it's just like, okay. Miami and Atlanta ain't the only cities in the United States. All right, let me get my feta cheese. Let me get my homemade tzatziki sauce that we made earlier that's been sitting in the fridge. Let's kind of put some of this stuff. I'm going to turn that off. Get this kind of squared away so we can plate and we can taste. I'm ready to eat. Here's our... This looks good. Nice little different... A different version of like a brunch or breakfast skillet all right let's go ahead and you really about to come oh, okay i'm about to say thank you all right let's just pour some of these potatoes oh this is gonna be good so we're giving like skillet vibes. Y'all know y'all had the little breakfast skillets with the potatoes. I do not like eggs. So if I liked eggs, I would have made like a little fried eggs on top over easy or something. 
Okay. I'm going to put a little, y'all know I'm going to show y'all what our food is looking like. Put a little chicken on top. Eat plenty of protein because I love protein. And also it's great for you because, you know, it helps with everything that has to do with the muscles. I'm going to put a little cucumber because I love cucumber. And, you know, we're going for that Mediterranean vibe. Here, let's. Let's see. Take that off. <laughs> Yvette says Vegas is overrated. It is. I'll be honest. It is. Even though I like Vegas, it's definitely overrated. All right. So let me put the cheese on here first. So I got some feta cheese. I didn't get the low fat version, but I got. Okay, I'm just making sure my microphone didn't get messed up. I did get the. Um, the 100% goat or sheep's milk version. So it's not deer or cow milk made from cow's milk. It's actually made from sheep's milk. So we're going to sprinkle a little little feta cheese. If you don't like feta cheese or you don't want it, you don't have to use it. But your girl likes cheese, so I'm going to use it. Okay. Got the feta cheese. We're going to do a little fresh dill because I love fresh herbs. And then we're going to do a dollop of daisy, <laughs> a dollop of our tzatziki sauce. Okay. All right. We are done. We have completed our gyro chicken skillet. I'm going to put this in the fridge. All right, y'all. Presenting our chicken gyro skillet. Okay. We got potatoes, yellow squash, tomatoes. We have cucumber. Chicken, fresh dill, homemade tzatziki feta cheese. Yes, it is amazing. Do you plate? You make plates look like a work of art. I try. I try. Thank you. Thank you. You love the dishes. No non bread because we're using potatoes. So that's why I decided. I decided to go with potatoes as opposed to like the bread. So that's why I'm like a little skillet. Love the dishes. Where'd you get? I got these. These either came from Walmart or Target. These ones came from Walmart. These particular ones, this one came from Target. Or I'm sorry, Walmart. All right. So I'm going to take a picture really quickly and then I'll plate. We've been on here for a little while, but that's okay, y'all. I'll keep you sometimes. Thank y'all for joining me for brunch. I've been over here drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have any more questions. If y'all have any more questions for me, I'll stay on and answer your questions. But if not, we'll be done shortly. All right. That's one picture. Let's make, let me do another one. Oh, this looks so good. I'm ready. This tzatziki sauce. Let me get a video. Let me pour a little champagne. I've been asking the same question. Oh, he's talking about the the. Uh... Derek is talking about the bowls. I think I don't know. All right. Let me make a video, and then we're gonna be done. Or I'll 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 uh I'll taste. I'm so ready for this. I'm hungry. That's another thing. When I um, when I cook for y'all on live, I be waiting to eat because I want to make sure y'all get a good reaction from me. I want y'all to get my real reaction from the food, and I want to like actually want to eat it. So 
All right. Here we go. Let me. Let's taste. Oh, let's get a little tzatziki, some potato. Nice, healthy bite. Mm. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. That's good. But y'all got me cussing. I'm trying to be a proper lady. This is good, y'all. Like the potatoes. Mm. Oh, my God. Y'all got to try this. <laughs> this is really good. It's different, though. But the tzatziki sauce, like, brings it all together. You don't have to make the tzatziki sauce, but it's so easy. I highly recommend it. Mm. Perfect for, like, a brunch or breakfast. I don't like eggs, but if you are an egg fan, y'all see me keep eating. Like, I have not stopped. If you are a breakfast person or you like eggs, highly recommend add the egg. Oh my god. Let me stop eating y'all face. Y'all got y'all got to try this. Will you ever have guests in the kitchen? Yes, I'm actually working on that behind the scenes. That is something that I want to do. Not guests cooking with me in the kitchen, but I want to have some friends over in this chat. So I got to get all that. I got to get all of that worked out logistically. Cameras, lighting, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. Stacy and I are pulling up next week for show. Okay. Actually, yeah, next week. Okay. I, I do have one Sunday. I'm not going to be going live because I got a wedding <clears throat> to go to. We all hungry watching you cook. Yes. Can we do a cook and watch session? Yes. Absolutely. I told you what I what I plan on doing. Y'all have seen how many times I keep going back to this, right? Not to say the other dishes aren't good, but like I'm really hungry and this is like really really good. The flavors are just amazing. The feta cheese, the tzatziki, the chicken, this cavender seasoning is really good, so y'all definitely need to try this out, okay? All right. Hmm. Here you go. Take it. Because I will eat that for the rest of the night. All right, y'all. We've been on here for two hours. I typically don't keep y'all this long, but y'all ain't complaining. <laughs> um, if y'all don't have any more questions, that'll be all for me. We're done with our food. I gave y'all the 15 facts about me. I hope y'all learned something. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I figure why not? Because I haven't done like a formal type situation where people are able to ask me questions just to learn a little bit more about me. I think that's important to do as we build this little community here that we have on YouTube. Also, oh, I forgot to take this off. Oh, well. Also, I really, really appreciate y'all. Like I said earlier, we are at over 800 watch hours in just two and a half months that I have been on YouTube. I have been able to acquire that many uh, watch hours. I'm going to try to go for an even bigger goal for May. I'm trying to get monetized, y'all, and I really appreciate the fact that y'all are here with me on this journey. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I will be back alive tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to cook, but we're going to be talking about Love is Blind because the season finale comes on in two hours, a little bit less than two hours. And I'm going to be in front of the TV on Netflix seeing what happens. And we're going to talk about it tomorrow. I'll probably add in a little bit of extra stuff in there so the fellas don't feel like they don't know what we're talking about. Make sure y'all come join me. Make sure y'all share this video. Make sure you're liking this video. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you feel so inclined to support me in any type of way, all of the links are in the description. Um, if you would like more information on the fitness side, be sure to check out my website, www.mysexyestrong.com. Um, and you can also connect with me on social media. All of my links are below. So thank y'all so much for joining. Shout out to Celeste for her 
generous donation of the $25 on Cash App. I really, really appreciate y'all so much. I really do. I can't say thank you enough. I really do oh, appreciate y'all. That's why I say it all the time. I post about it all the time because I want y'all to know, like, I don't take for granted y'all giving me some of your time. So that's all I got. I ain't got no more. I will see y'all tomorrow. Um, so we can talk about Love is Blind because there's a whole lot to talk about. All right. Derek, boozy gumbo. Really? Boozy gumbo? Oh, Lord. We'll see. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming with me on Sunday, for cooking with me and chatting with me. I appreciate you all. I will see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a good rest of your Sunday. Cheers. Y'all have a good one.